If you are looking for some audacious, indulgent blank comedy, then Bo is Afraid is the movie you should not miss. Bo is Afraid offers a peculiar comfort in the twisted neuroses it explores, as if the turmoil of living within your mind pales compared to the mental labyrinth of Ari Aster, the film's creator. Aster's latest work takes the incredibly traumatic yet oddly comical moments from his previous films, such as Tony Collette's shocking scene in Hereditary, because nobody admits anything they've done! Or the fiery fate of Midsummer's ill-fated boyfriend. <laughs> and weaves them into a three-hour dark comedy filled with unsettling vibes and ritualistic humiliations. This film lives up to expectations, being both unforgettable and unapologetically self-indulgent, fitting for a 24's most lavish production. In fact, it reportedly left one disgruntled American moviegoer so infuriated that he disrupted the ending credits with a loud outburst, demanding silence from the audience. In this movie, Bo's existence is a poignant one. With nearly 50 years on this planet, it's hard to argue that he's truly experienced life. While he was indeed born as an individual, one must question whether Bo ever carved out an identity distinct from that of his accomplished single mother, Mona Wasserman who looms over the film for the majority of its three-hour duration before unveiling her true self. Bo goes through a chain of abuses in which the only occasional respite is provided by a sudden blow to the head, but his mission remains clear. He's going to visit his long-widowed mother, Mona, whom he hasn't seen in quite some time, even though she lives a short flight away. Fun fact, Mona is played at different ages and in different registers of consciousness by a creepily insinuating Zoe Lister-Jones and a typically indomitable Patti Lupone. This movie actually tells four different stories, each with its own distinct tone, atmosphere, and ratio of grisly shocks to twisted laughs. These episodes coalesce, after a fashion, into the bleakest of picaresque odysseys, a cracked meditation on Jewish guilt, filial rebellion, and maternal awfulness that blurs the lines between horror and comedy, dream and memory, physical reality, and psychological maelstrom. Phoenix's anguish in this movie is so immediately poignant and recognizable, so on the surface accessible, that it can trick you into thinking there's more to Bo as a character than just a whimpering avatar of trauma. Part of the movie's conceit is that Bo's guilt is such a paralyzing, all-consuming force as to obliterate any sense of who he really is, what he's really done, what he's genuinely guilty of. As a character, he has scarcely more emotional definition than the little white figurine he purchases early on as a gift for his mom. Aster has always had a weakness for treating his characters like chess pieces, moving them toward their grim fates with breathtaking, sometimes agonizing deliberation. That approach worked brilliantly in Hereditary, which turned its protagonist's dollhouse dioramas into a startling visual conceit and a hell of a satanic metaphor. It's far less effective in an ostensibly more unhinged, unbridled work like Bo is Afraid, where even the most surreal intrusion and the nuttiest non sequitur feels calculated to within an inch of its life. Aster may ultimately be too much the formalist control freak to achieve the crazy, let-it-all-hang-out catharsis he's chasing, and the elaborate trap he's engineered for Bo seems to close, finally, on himself. He's made a guilt trip to nowhere. Overall, if we look into its filmography, presentation of character, and their emotions, then this movie will not disappoint you at all. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive into Bo is Afraid. If you agreed with our take or think we missed something, please let us know in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on our future movie reviews and discussions.